experts to evaluate their ontologies. And I have carried out this work together with my advisors, Mari Carmen Suarez and Asuncion Pérez. Uh, the schedule from my talk is, I will, as follows, I will introduce the problem and briefly revise the state of the art in ontology evaluation approaches and ontology evaluation tools. I will, then I will show our approach to helping this problem and finally I will, I will show um, the evaluation I have, uh, we have carried out over the tool so far that is user-based and I will finish with some conclusions and future work. Um, in the last decades uh, there has been methodologies to guide ontology developers during the ontology de development process have been developed and these, uh, these methodologies try to, try to transform the art of building ontologies into an engineering activity, activities, um, proposing workflows and guidelines. Uh, however, mostly in the conceptual and modeling part of the development, developers always have to deal with difficulties that as consequence could lead to errors appearing in the resulting ontologies. Uh, for this reason, to carry out the ontology evaluation activity is vital in any ontology engineering project. Uh, due to its importance, there are lots of um, approaches um, that address ontology evaluation. There are, for example, generic evaluation framework or frameworks as we have <coughs> seen in the past presentation about based on the final use or reuse of the ontology we want to evaluate. Also there are quality models based on features, criteria and metrics and pattern-based uh, approaches. However, these um, methods are or, um, most of the time difficult to apply because you have a bunch of guidelines that you have to manually um, apply to your ontology and it's all, uh, usually a time consuming and dual task. Um, this situation shows the need for tools that automate um, as many steps as possible during the ontology evaluation. In this regard, there are several tools. Um, I just will mention some of, the, of them. And all the clean and all the are not suitable for our use case because they do not support all ontologies. There are other tools like XD tools and XD analyzer, onto check and Moki that are dependent on the ontology development environment and we want to develop an, a tool that is not linked to a, any ontology editor. In addition, most of the tools need uh, some installation process or, I don't know, the installation process either the tool or the ontology editor behind the, the plugin. As we can see, most of them uh, follows the approach of checking the ontologies against a checklist. And we also have our checklist. Um, this pit for catalog was first published in 2010 and it's not really our catalog. It includes uh, errors detected by other authors as Asun um, Gomez Perez, um, Alan Rector, and Noyan McGuinness. And we have enlarged the list of errors by manually analyzing like 30 ontologies or so. So every time we, we find or we are for some reason analyzing an ontology and we, dis we discover something strange or weird in the modeling, we write it down and think uh, and see if this error appears most, more times in other ontologies and then include it in the, in the catalog. Following this approach, we have added five new pitfall, pitfalls since 2012. And also we um, provide support to users that want to detect some errors that are not included in the catalog, they can send to us and we will include it. So we maintain and evolve this list of errors. So this catalog is the somehow the origin of OOPS, 
because we wanted to people to see at the uh, look at the catalog and check if their if in their ontologies they can find the problems we defined. But at the end, it takes a long time and people just give up the, the activity. So we thought that we need to automate the detection of these pitfalls as um, as many pitfalls as possible. So we develop OOPS as a web-based tool so that no installation is needed or you don't need to to install um, a, a concrete ontology e editor and it's available in that URI. Uh, this is how it looks from inside. There is a web user interface that uh, where the user enters the ontology and then it is parsed uh, using GINA API and then the scanner looks either for pitfalls, warnings and suggestions to make to the user. Finally, the user interface so, shows all the results using web-based technologies such as HTML and jQuery. So, looking through the interesting part, um, the main module look for pitfalls, as we have said. Actual, uh, currently, there are 21 pitfalls implemented out of the 29 listed in the, in the catalog. We have implemented one, one Java class for each pitfall, and there is two ways to detect the errors. Some, some Java classes look for general characteristics of, of the ontology, for example, whether there are different naming convention, conventions used or whether there are no disjoint axioms in the ontology. That's, those are characteristic of the general ontology. And the other way is looking for patterns. So for example, we look for, to detect the pitfall number five that is defining wrong inverse relationships. We look at two relationships that are defined at inverse, but they don't, one of them does not have the same range as the domain of the other one. So it could be an error or could be not, but it's a hint for us to point to the, those relationships. And there are many other examples. Then uh, while the pitfall scanning, scanning is running, there could be um, warnings that flag up uh, during runtime. So these warnings are about classes or properties that are not defined uh, by using the OWL primitive. So they appear in the ontology, but they are not defined. And there is no Java class dedicated for this module. And finally, the suggestion scanner looks for properties that have equal domain and range that could be perfectly fine, but we suggest that maybe they could be transitive properties or symmetric properties. And this is how OOPS looks like from outside. This is a website that has a brief description of the tool. And in the right part, you can provide feedback and suggest new pitfalls. There is a user guide and documentation for using OOPS and how it, explaining how it, it works. And there are also related papers in conference or workshop about OOPS. And in the main area is where the user entered either the URI or paste the OWL code of the ontology they want to evaluate. And just pressing the, the button, button uh, they get the results. These results uh, consist of the name of the pitfalls, how many times it appears, a brief uh, description of what it consists on and some examples, and the elements affected by the pitfalls, the elements containing the ontology. So, and now I'm going to, to show the user based evaluation we have done over the ontology. Uh, we had carried out three uh, experimental settings for the, two experimental settings for the evaluation. And one, the first one is regarding research projects. Uh, we use uh, the um, MIO and Busca Media projects where two ontologies were developed uh, by seven developers and we forced them to use OOPS in order to, 
to evaluate the ontologies and provide feedback. The main points they expressed was that they found oops quite useful to find errors. And also they like that it was uh, independent of the ontology editor, so it doesn't matter if they were using Protege or Neon, everybody could use it. And also that it covers more errors than the other tools. And they also provide feedback, and it's worth mentioning that in that time, September 2011, there was no graphical user interface, so they proposed to have a graphical user interface, and it is done. Also, to provide more information about pitfalls, because at the beginning, we only provide the title, and you have to guess what that means. And also, to consider the imported ontologies, and we also implemented that. As other feedback we got is that they would like to be able to to analyze subset of pitfalls, not the whole list every time they use the, the tool. And also to provide, a, a, they would like to see recommendation about how to repair the errors. And the other experimental setting was in, during a, a master course at the UPM where we had 12 master students divided into groups. We gave them to different ontologies with different errors and they have to analyze them with OOPS and correct them. So they also, uh, after <coughs> filling the feedback form, they also asked for guidelines to solve the problems, uh, associate colors regarding the importance of the errors, and also to provide pointers to the lines of the code where the error was found. And finally, we announced the tool in several mailing lists, and several people has either sent feedback by filling the form, or sent us emails uh, <coughs> telling their experience or what they think. These are literally taken from the emails and the forms that everybody, most of the people say that it is used to use. They also like that no installation process is required because sometimes you just give up because you need to install several uh, plugins or... Uh, and also the quick results that you get if the ontology is pretty small. And that is good to detect low levels problems in ontologies. And the most important part in this feedback is the what they also want to, to see in, in OOPS. Uh, some people say that they want to show the errors and the pitfalls that do not appear in the ontology. And uh, also to include reasoning process, processes, so that, for example, now, the tool will complain if a sub-property doesn't have a domain, but the sub-property do contain, do have a domain defined. So they would like to, to see if, um, what will happen if you run some inference, and then you can take that as part of the ontology. Uh, again, they would like to, to be able to choose uh, the ontologies they want to, the pitfalls they want to check, and also they wouldn't like to see errors in deprecated terms. Um, in addition, they some of them uh, send us to to not having into account different namespaces in the ontology being analyzed, but this is kind of contradictory with having into account the imported ontology. So I guess the, the solution is to make them able to choose whether they want to have into account different spaces or not. And also, we got feedback about looking for URI misuses and not a standard character use in natural language annotations. Uh, finally, I will conclude with what we have done and the conclusion we get from this work and the future lines we want to work on. So, 
first, OOPS represents a step forward within ontology evaluation tools as it looks for more errors than other tools and also it is fully independent of the development environment and it also works with main web browsers and without installation process. Also it is free available on the web and everyone can send feedback and suggest new pitfalls and from this feedback we conclude that it is easy to use and also because it has been broadly used I would say because since last year more or less the two, 200 ontology have been analyzed using oops and uh, there are nearly 600 executions so uh, I think we could say it's accepted and as future work we present all the following lines so <coughs> first we plan to keep the catalog maintained and alive by also including errors that we look at, that we find when looking at ontologies and also the ones proposed by, by the users. Of course we will group, group uh, by categories the pitfalls and also allow users to check just the ones they want to, to analyze. Uh, we will provide guidelines about how to solve the, the, the pitfalls and I think the, the way to go should be to propose the, how to solve the pitfalls instead of solving them because some of them have several options to, to choose. Maybe if you got an, an error with a property and the class is involved, we cannot decide whether to change the classes or the properties. It has to be the developer who decides. Uh, we are analyzing the priority levels so that we associate colors or numbers to the pitfalls. And we will make REST services available so that other systems could analyze, just call the selected pitfalls and get the results programmatically because now it's only for human use. Um, this is the ambitious one. We would like to define a um, formal language where like UML or something where um, user can construct the pitfalls and this formal language can be translated automatically into the Java class who detects or other languages language program can detect automatically this error, then the, the user could define their own um, library or catalog of errors and translate the, them automatically because up to now someone has to look at the description and program it in the Java class. And also we will include uh, errors related to the linked data characteristic, for example we will look if the ontology or the terms are the referenceable or linked in the cloud or used. That will be another dimension. And finally, we will improve the pitfall detection algorithms because right now some of them could be quite naive, but at the beginning of this work where we want, wanted is to address um, as many people as possible to get into the ontology evaluation and I think that is kind of done. So the next step is to make it really accurate and improve the tool. And that's, oops. I have a question about uh, uh, actually the usability, but uh, with regard to comparison with uh, the other tools that you mentioned. I have to more loud. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, um, so one thing, the one main point is that this uh, this tool is uh, web-based, so you don't need to install it, and especially it's not integrated with any specific um, ontology editor. So I understand that this is a very 
you know, easy to use and uh, so you don't have to. On the other hand, an ontology developer may want to, to have it actually integrated in an ontology editor because uh, uh, the other some of the other tools that you mentioned, they allow you to go directly where the problem is and immediately fix it. So this is uh, very uh, uh, useful when you are, uh, so uh, in, in your case, you have to go back to step in, the, in your ontology editor, find the place and, uh, and uh, fix it. So in a sen in a very pragmatic, uh, from a very pragmatic perspective, actually to have a tool, in, uh, an, uh, an evaluation tool integrated with your ontology editor is, uh, could be much uh, um, uh, more useful. Um, or, uh, and so I was wondering if you are uh, uh, planning uh, to do something in this direction and uh, any way to uh, evaluate the tool in comparison with the, the other tool because at the moment the evaluation is based on uh, you know, only the, the usage of uh, this, this single tool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Comparison, uh, do you plan to evaluate by comparison and do you consider to integrate it with some ontology? We are <laughs> evaluating by comparison to other uh, ontology evaluation tools, the, um, mainly from the uh, coverage point of view and also the usability uh, point of view as well. And we were talking about having, about giving the opportunity of edit the ontology somehow in this system, but not including it in any ontology uh, editor. Because what we have seen is, for example, in Neon Toolkit, there are several versions of Neon Toolkit, and not all the plugins are updated up to the last uh, version. So for example, I don't know if reasoning, uh, go, you have to install the dot uh, two, three, four version, and if you want to use modularizing plugins, you have to install another version of Neon uh, Toolkit. Also, we tried to install Moki, but you have to install the whole wiki if you want to use it. You got a test user if you want to try it out, but it's quite complex to install that, so we thought it is better to have it uh, isolated. You would implement a new editor? No. <laughs> I have one question with regards to uh, the data being submitted. Uh, you already showed in a previous slide there was several hundred times or something. Well, anyway, there were users using it. I was wondering if you actually use that data to analyze, for instance, the prevalence of certain pitfalls in the ontologies being developed. Uh, in general, or perhaps also maybe there is an ontology development project and you, you look at it in time, what kind of pitfalls do occur in time in the ontology development project, uh, using say, like the results obtained with, uh, oops. Uh, repeat. We are, um, I just, I don't understand the whole question, if you can repeat. <laughs> Uh, you do, so like here you have 207 different ontologies that have been evaluated with OOPS. Uh, obviously, that, there is a report for each ontology uh, that shows all the pitfalls. So I was wondering, uh, what are the incidents of certain pitfalls over others? Are there groupings in there uh, for the individual ontologies, as well as when you have, a, a, say like an ontology development project, they may want to check the, uh, the, the ontology uh, yeah, in time and to see what yeah, the sequence of the uh, pitfalls are. We got a statistic about all the appearance of the pitfalls e for each ontology at one point of the time. So we see if they reevaluate it. But I don't think that is really useful as uh, actually the errors are potential errors and then we saw what is happening and then the developer must say I will change this or I will not change this. Then what I, the statistics I got are from the um, tool but I don't know if the developers agree with the results or not. So I don't have information about how accurate is the tool and 
so I'm missing something there. I only got that information from the developers who send me feedback and say, do show me this pitfall and it's not real. Or thank you, it was real. To Maria uh, replies, uh, um, I think it's a good idea to analyze uh, which pitfalls are more common in the ontologies we 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 are analyzing at the moment. So to show people that these are the most in, uh, pitfalls done by other users, other developers. So it's uh, maybe useful also for the next uh, developers. So it's uh, a very nice <laughs> idea too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was happy to see in one of your slides that you were mentioning that one of the feedback was about annotation properties on natural language. Uh, and I think this is an important, it was on the evaluation one. And I think this is an important issue. Yeah, the, the point H, um, we noticed that uh, label and annotation properties are not used properly. So there is no terminology at work and this kind of thing. And I think that this is a good way to come to cooperate between language, technology, terminology, and and ontology, so I think this is an important point from our point of view. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I just have a quick look on um, your tune on on the website, and I I did see that you you have some uh, you know kind of error messages. Um, which includes some pitfall, uh, say for example, missing equivalent properties or, or missing inverse uh, relationship. So I'm, I have a question related to these cat pitfall. Um, so did you really check? Because I, uh, for what I understanding about these pitfall is, is cat suggestion. So you're lacking up something and you should put it into the ontologies. So did you really check that after the ontology developer in you know, add these uh, axiom into the ontology, then the, the ontology is still consistent or not? You know, it, will, is it possible that after adding this uh, axiom, then the ontology will, you know, appear some uh, inconsistent or some dip, some other arrows? Um, we are not uh, doing any inference or reasoning over the, the ontologies. And then I guess they, if they change something and add new action, they will have to check against a reasoner. Also, I would like to know that um, um, for some pitfalls or errors, we are also planning to point, or in addition to this evaluation, we are planning to point to other tools. Then if you can save all of them, you can have a more complete evaluation. In addition, I think XD tools have different pitfalls that, that oops. So for example, if a pitfall involves some problems with reasoning, we will point to pillet <coughs> or fat. Yeah, we we think one of the um, uh, debates we have is how to associate priorities because it depends of any project. But we think that those related with inference or reasoning problems could be one of the uh, most important pitfalls. Okay, so again, unless there is any burning question, and Maya will get a demonstration <laughs> for the <laughs> uh, I think we can thank her.